please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Morrow versus Curry. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Morrow, you say you've been living a lie for 30 years. You stand before the court today ready to finally find out whether your biological father is the man you grew up believing to be your dad or if his brother, the defendant, Mr. Curry, is your father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Curry, you admit to sleeping with the plaintiff's mother one time after a wild night of partying. Yes, but Your Honor. But you say you don't believe you're her biological father because there were other possibilities as well. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Morrow, how did you come to the conclusion that your uncle might actually be your biological father? Well, recently, the man that I thought was my biological father did a DNA test himself after 30 years, and it came back that he wasn't my father. Um, so basically, for 30 years, I lived this lie thinking that he was my father, which... I never met him until I was about seven years old at a court hearing for child support or something. My mother brought me with her. I briefly stepped off the elevator. She said, Amanda, this is your father. Um, he said, hi, how are you? That was it. I never heard from him again until I was 15. A randomly a letter came in the mail from him saying that I'm your father. I want to be in your life. I'm sorry I wasn't there. I want to fill the makeup for not being there. And it all just started from there. and. It was very hard for me to let him in, so I was very hesitant about having him in my life. After a year of just talking on the phone, we, my mom went to Connecticut for me to meet him. My grandfather was dying, so I met him around that time that my grandfather was dying. We had lunch, um, spent the afternoon together, and that was it. And how old were you then? I was 16. It was a so year after the initial... So pretty much your entire life, you had no real relationship with the man you believed to be your biological father. My mother said that when she was pregnant, he walked away that he didn't want anything to do with me. So I never had a father on my birth certificate, never had a father in my life, but I always knew. Of... But you, see, my brother you always... understood him to be your father. That's the person you thought. My brother always believed that he was her father until just recently when he got this DNA test done. That's when I found out that apparently he wasn't either. But there's a question as to the validity of the test that he took because he left the sample sitting around for a while. Tell me what happened there. So your brother took a DNA test. Correct. And before sending it in, he did, I guess, apparently didn't have the money to send it in to get the results. So he left it sitting around for a month or two. And this was an at-home test. Mm-hmm. He purchased the and test. And he left his sample sitting where for a month? He sat in his car for a couple weeks, and then when... Conf conflicting story there, he told me he left it on his refrigerator. And he told me he left it in the car for two weeks, and then when he mailed it, it got mailed back to him because there wasn't enough postage on it. And then he mailed me my part of the kit, so that's when this all started. When he mailed me the part for me, he mailed me two, two samples. One for my mother, one for me. So I called my mother. I said, Mom, you know, we were supposed to be going down to visit her in a week or so. And I said, listen, Dave bought a DNA test because he always had questionable doubts. You know, he said he's my father, but he just wanted proof. Well, I have a DNA kit here. I'm sending in my sample. And I said, if there's any doubt that he's not my father, I, I need to know now before I come to Florida, find out the results, and things will hit the fan when I find out that you lied to me. And then that's when she came out and said, Amanda, I never wanted you to know the truth. When I was young, I was gang raped by three men, and you're a victim of that rape, and Dave is not your father. I didn't yeah. believe that story. So I wouldn't believe it either because yeah. he I, was, was one of I them. was the first one to sleep with her. I slept with her one time. You then slept with Ms. Morrow's mother. Correct. Then I introduced her at a party to my brother, which he, she started sleeping with him. Like, why not say, I don't know who your father is. Why say this David Curry is my father from the time 15, you let me meet, meet him, go to his mother's funeral, meet his family, spend Thanksgiving with his family. She would never have told me the truth until this David finally decided he wanted to do a DNA test. So she told me on the phone. And I kind of was like, you know, it hit me. I was upset. I mailed it in overnight. Uh, I told David I mailed it in. He still didn't pay for the payment. So you were holding out hope that this man really was your father because all these years you believed him to be and you'd established a relationship Not somewhat with his family? I'm, I'm close with their niece, his niece, David's niece, their other brother's daughter. Yeah, yeah, I'm I close. didn't meet Amanda until she was 15. 16. 16 at Thanksgiving I, at my house. It's not that I wanted year. him to be my father, but I wanted to know who my father was. June 6th, uh, I got the email. DNA results were in. 
I click on the link and it says that he's not my father. So then at some point, you are told that the man you thought was your father, he didn't send in the sample in a timely manner. No. Correct. That's why when I did you, the test. When were you told up. that? I mean, I, I kind of knew that because he kept saying, oh, well, I'm getting it there, I'm getting it there. But I, I, I just still had that hope, just that it was correct. So after that happened, about 20, finding out that he was my father, for that 24 hours, it was just, I was a wreck. I was very emotional, upsetting. Like, I'm like, wow, I have a child that I can never say, well, you have a grandfather. My husband lost his father when he was very young, so my, my son has a grandfather. And it's not, it's not that, it's just, I need to know these things for the sake of my son, health-wise, and where we come from and everything. So for 24 hours, I sat there emotionally crying, like devastated that I will never know who my father is. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Hey, his niece, who I'm close with, said, hey, Uncle Ken knows some things. And that's when Ken reached out to me and told me that he slept with my mother, another man slept with my mother, um, another man slept with my mother. Um, and another man. And another man. Yeah. All um, in the same time he frame. He told me the name of the other man that David and he both thought was my father all these years. So all of these men, Correct. on top of that, you do a DNA test with the man you believe to be your father, and there's an issue with the sample. Correct. Correct. So it's just confusion all around. Correct. So look, we use DNA diagnostics, a laboratory, mm -hmm. to perform all of the DNA testing for paternity court. And we wanted to ask Dr. Baer, our lead scientist there, if the sample would have been tainted, this is what he said. The sample you referred to is clearly not an ideal sample. Generally, if a DNA sample is compromised, you will see that in the results, in the e-grams, to show that it's not appropriate for testing. I recommend that this sample be recollected to ensure reliable results. So, as you can see, you that go. sample was likely compromised because it was not sent in in a timely manner. Right. So we did have the man you believe to be your father tested again <laughs> under the right conditions, and we'll have that result later, okay? So let's now understand how you came to realize or came to know that your uncle could be your father. Who told you that? Um, when he told his niece. <laughs> His niece told me, listen, you need to talk to Uncle Ken. And he told me that. But my, what I want to know is why nobody said these, told me that this when you met me the first time, that you slept with my mother. You know, you also well, it's knew... Not, it's not something you, you, you tell a 15-year-old girl. Yeah, <laughs> confront yeah, I mean, my mother is what I, you, you know, well, when I was 16... See, the you, issue with me is the, only the one time and then introducing her mother a couple of weeks, you know, after that, meeting my brother, meeting these other guys, I just didn't think the time frame could fit for me. But then my wife put a picture of my daughter next to a picture of Amanda, and first thing my wife said was, well, I don't know, you know, very well could be. The other issue is the other man that my mother was dating at the same time that she was dating his brother. I guess when I was 16, when we came up to visit, David came to visit me as well at my grandparents' house, and his friend drove him. This friend is who is the other man that could potentially be my father. And he always knew about me. When I found out his name from Ken, I actually looked up online and contacted him. And what did he say? Oh, yeah, I've always known about you. I, I always thought you could be my daughter. When I, he's like, we've met. I met you when David came to see you. Think back, when you were 16, remember a man bringing David to come visit you? I was that man. He's like, when I looked at you, I thought you could be mine. Yeah, but he, he, oh my goodness! You know, he figured he figured if my brother would sign the paternity papers and, and he wanted to cop to it, well, let him. So, what kind of man is that? Yeah. When you met her, you thought I this thought was she, your niece, but she could be your daughter. No, no. I when I first met Amanda, I thought she looked a lot like this other guy that we're talking about. So when you met her for the first time, were you thinking in your mind this could be my daughter or you immediately no, said no, this could be one of the other guys? It never crossed my mind until just, just recently when my brother said that he had taken this DNA test and it came back that he wasn't the father. Okay. Then, then, then I said, 
to myself, well, there's a slim chance, you know. This is piecing together as you go along. It's piecing together for you as well. And your wife pulls out the picture and shows it to you. And you start saying, oh, my goodness. Very well could be my daughter. If my brother's not her father and she looks like everyone in my family and she has similar health issues, there's only then one maybe conclusion I to come am. To. I also look a dead ringer for my mother. So it's hard for me to compare myself to anybody. But when I looked up this other man who didn't want anything to do with any of this, I look, pulled up his picture online and I, I think I look like him. But it, it's, it's my baby pictures, I look like him. But he wants, when I called him, he said, yeah, I know, but I don't want my family knowing anything. I don't want any part in this. He's like, what do you want from me? I said, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not looking for a daddy. I'm not looking for a grandfather for my son. I'm looking for where I come from, my closure. <laughs> my mother, I, I read a message David sent to me that my mother sent to David stating, I hope you do the DNA test so I can spit in your face for, deny, for doubting that she's your daughter. Um, and then I also read that he signed a paternity agreement when I was just about 18 months old, which I have a copy of. Let he, me see that, Jerome. I went to the courthouse to find this myself, and I never knew about it. And he signed stating that he's my father, but he's not on my birth certificate because he didn't do the DNA sample. This is, in fact, an acknowledgement of paternity signed June 27, 1985. Mm -hmm. So he signed and acknowledged he's your father. But did not take the DNA test. Yeah, but the fact that he signed that and not my birth certificate is because he didn't do the DNA test. So my whole life has been embarrassed that I don't have a father on my birth certificate. That I don't have, I never had a, a... Listen, do not be embarrassed. This is nothing for you to be embarrassed about at all. What's hard for me too is just, my wedding, I didn't have a man to give me away. My birth of my son, I didn't have parents there. I didn't speak to my mom throughout my pregnancy because it was just too much for me. And, you know, it's sad because she didn't come to my wedding. She didn't come to the birth. She did come after because my husband contacted her and said, look, let's, let's start over. You know? So what are you hoping for today? What are you hoping these results? Just to know... Just, I, I need closure, know where I came from, who's my father. I'm not looking for somebody to be my dad. I'm, I'm 30 years old, I've lived my life, you know, I've grown this long without a father, I'm okay. I just wanna know where I came from, health reasons, heritage, so I can tell my son one day what nationality he is, you know, or what health risks are on his side of the family. That's why she needs to find out who her, who her, who her real father is. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Curry, what are you hoping for today? I'm, I'm hoping if it turns out that I am her father, that we can have a good relationship. I mean, we already do. <laughs> but um, it would also be bittersweet at the same time that not knowing that or not even thinking it for 30 years. So We live 15 minutes yeah. apart, and I have never got together with a family, except for when I was 16. He's in one wow. town over, and the only one I get together with is his niece. I mean, even when I've, I've gone to his niece's baby shower, the family just always, oh, you're David's daughter. Oh, you're, you're David's daughter. He wasn't there. But... I mean, it's just a shame that like, if okay, I'm family, why haven't they acknowledged me when I live 15 minutes from them, except for his niece, that's it. I don't know how, where it's gonna go from here. Well, I'll tell you what, in order to move forward, we need the results. And so Jerome, I think we are ready <laughs> to find out the truth. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Morrow v. Curry, as it pertains to the paternity of Ms. Amanda Morrow, it has been determined that Mr. David Curry is not your father. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. So now it has been confirmed that in fact David Curry is not your biological father. Are you ready for the next result? 
If you need to sit down, ma'am, please feel free. I'm okay. You okay? Thank you. In the case of Morrow v. Curry, as it pertains to 30-year-old Amanda Morrow, Amanda, Mr. Kenneth Curry is not your father. Sorry, sweetheart. I just don't understand how someone could do this to their child. How do you lie to your child? Well, I'll never know. How do I tell my son this growing up that I don't know who my father is? I just want closure. I want this to end. I just want to know. I want to sleep at night and not have nightmares or... But the one other guy, Amanda, who I wasn't able to locate, um, I will most certainly continue looking for him. Thank you very much, Mr. Curry. Thank you for that. Ms. Morrill, do not ever give up. I know this was not the news you wanted today. I just want to know the truth. If you ever need this courtroom, again, we're here to help you. If there's someone else you'd like to have tested or that agrees to have tested, and we'll provide resources for you to help you process and get through this, okay? Thank you. We wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Court is adjourned. Jerome, can you please escort Ms. Morrow and her husband up to the bench, please? There are times it feels like you're running into a brick wall. You've been blessed with a really strong guy here. But if you have to take that wall apart brick by brick, I know he's gonna help you move them. He has. Isn't that correct? Definitely. You understand? Yes, ma'am.